In our first reading of today, which is taken from the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verses 1 to 2, and verses 11 to 18, through the mouth of Moses, God tells his people how they must be. God begins by telling them, you must not steal or deal deceitfully or fraudulently with your neighbor. And God goes on to say, you must not be guilty of unjust verdicts. You must not be guilty of doing something which is wrong to your neighbor, of taking more than your due. And a number of beautiful advices is given to those of us who are willing to listen. This is confirmed in the gospel text of today, which is taken from the gospel of Matthew 25 verses 31 to 46 and is part of Matthew's eschatological discourse. The English word eschatological comes from the Greek eschaton, which is translated as the last things, the things of the afterlife the things of judgment. And in it, Jesus tells a parable. And the parable is about the last judgment and about the separation of the righteous from the unjust and unrighteous. And how will that separation take place? According to the Mathe and Jesus, it will take place not only by the words that one has spoken, which are also important, but it will take place primarily on the deeds that one has performed. And so, when the separation is made, those who are on the right, which is the side of the right, the side of favor, are told this. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me to drink. When I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, you came to see me. When I was naked, you clothed me. There can be no other advice which is as practical as this, which is, as in the first reading from Leviticus, be here through the mouth of Moses to reach out to the neighbor. So a person who sees another hungry has to reach out to that person and a person thirsty has to reach out to the person and a person sick has to visit and a person naked has to clothe because we are not individuals. We are individuals but part of a community. Every other human being is my brother and my sister. And that is why their challenges are my challenges. Their joys are my joys. Their sorrows are my sorrows. And this is how the judgment on the last day will take place. What is more important is how the righteous respond. And the righteous respond by telling the Lord who applauds them, who places them right up on a pedestal. The righteous tell the Lord, Lord, when did we see you hungry? We do not remember. When did we see you thirsty? We do not remember. When were you in prison and sick and naked and we came to your help? We do not remember. And the Lord will reply, Whenever you did it to someone in need, whenever you did it to the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. And then, those who are on the left, the sign of disfavor, the sign of those who are condemned, will be told that when the Lord was hungry, they never gave him to eat. When the Lord was thirsty, they never gave him to drink. When he was in sick and prison, they never visited him. When he was naked, they never clothed him. And they in turn will ask the Lord, when the Lord was hungry and when the Lord was thirsty, they did not see him. And the Lord says to them, as long as you failed to do it to those brothers and sisters whom you could see and touch and feel, you did not do it to me. And so judgment 
according to this text in the Gospel of Matthew, is judgment which will be based on one's action. If one continues to live a selfish life, if one continues to live a life that is self-centered and egotistical, such a life will surely be condemned. A life which is a life well lived is a life lived not only for oneself, but reaching out in service, reaching out to those in need, reaching out in love. Will you, who profess to be a disciple of Jesus, will you, who profess to be a disciple of the truth, realize that you are not an island, that you are an individual within community, and will you reach out to at least one person in Ooh.